It's just in my blood. I just love it. I couldn't even imagine playing with any other girls. Like, we're just so close. It's like we're sisters. This is nonstop action. It's just not like any other sport. Hockey is a way of life. There's no sport in the world quite like it. It starts on the frozen ponds of small towns, or maybe when mom and dad put you on skates as you're learning to walk. No other sport in the world requires the level of skill, toughness, and dedication it takes to be a hockey player. It's a life of early morning practices, waking up with new aches and pains, fresh scars and bruises. It is the hardest sport to play, but for those who master it, are forever immortalized. Winning is the only thing that matters. For those who win, they are linked together for eternity. But for those who don't, it is heartbreak that may never go away. In New England, hockey is a rite of passage. It's a game played by few, but loved by many. There are no names on the back of their uniforms, yet we remember them forever. The name on the front is all that matters. Twenty-four players from three different towns, together with one goal, to realize the dreams of a die-hard fan base. This is Tanner Hockey. Tewksbury Red Rangers will advance to the state semifinals again for the second year in a row. Find a 7-1 victory. Liberty Tanner season will come to a tragic end here in Woburn, Massachusetts. I look up at the scoreboard and it says Methuen Tewksbury 7, Peabody 1. And I'll be honest, it, it almost brought a tear to my eye because I knew this team was a lot better than the scoreboard indicated and I knew how hard they had fought to get here. It was the absolute dream season. Well, leading up to the round three loss, you know, we were all very excited. Um, after the loss, it was, you know, like any other season ending, it was heartbreaking, but especially since it was, you know, the semifinals, it was kind of that that higher emotion and that all the tears and all that stuff, but it took a couple days to get over it. I think obviously it was sad for all of us, but I think after a lot of tears, um, we focused on how far we made it and the positives of the situation because the team's never made it that far. We've never made it to the quarterfinals. So although it was hard and challenging to just kind of get over it, I think we did a good job by focusing on the things we did well instead of the things we didn't do well. This losing 7-1, you know, that was tough. They were a great team. But I think we really accomplished what we wanted to last season, which was beating St. Mary's. So I, I was proud of last season for us as a team. That's the thing in hockey. It can be taken away from you just like that without warning. games a year in winter, all roads in Linfield, North Reading, and Peabody, Massachusetts all lead to the old barn at 511 Lowell Street, the McVan O'Keefe Arena.
perennial bottom dwellers to a team on the rise, the 2018-19 iteration of the squad accomplished feats never before seen on a Tanner women's ice hockey team. Co-Northeastern Hockey League champs and 15-game winners, the ladies in blue and white advanced further into the playoffs than any team to lace up the skates before them, before falling in round three to Tewksbury Methuen, the eventual Division I champions. But as the ice began to melt, many were left wondering, had the clock finally struck midnight on the Tanner's Cinderella story. With five full-time starters gone, Tanner bench boss Michelle Roach faced probably her toughest challenge since her first season at the helm in retooling her roster. Every year is a new year, so we try to do a little bit of everything. Um, you know, we try to integrate um, the new freshmen where we can. We also take a look at what talent that we have on the team already. Um, and where people could fit into roles such as, you know, Ellen T went from playing D and now she's up and forward. So we just take a new look at the team because the chemistry is completely different. Um, so we start at the beginning of the year and we start to put the pieces together. Freshmen like Jenna DiNapoli, Hannah Gromko, and Penelope Spack were slated to fill in the gaps on one of the highest scoring forward groups in the league. The upperclassmen on the team uh, were really welcoming and Every practice, we, they would work with me, and I was able to get better, and that really boosted my confidence and my skill level. Well, I did not expect to, but I'm glad I've been able to contribute as much as I have, and I'm really glad I got the chance to start. Last year's freshmen, now with a year's experience under their belts, were looked upon to step up into expanded roles from their rookie seasons. The adjustment's been pretty easy. I mean, I've worked really hard over like the summer, doing a bunch of skills and stuff, and I feel like I contribute to the team pretty well. So I think coming in as a freshman, you're like nervous, you don't really know everyone, but as a sophomore when I came in, I knew a lot of girls, I knew the systems, the coaches, so I just felt coming in, I had more confidence and I was just ready to play. The 2019-20 Tanners boasted a lineup of established stars and budding prospects like Riley Ganter, Jen Collins, and Hannah Gromko. But the triple threat of Jenna DiNapoli, Jen Flynn, and Sammy Mirasolo helped them define their season. Rebound, shot, Flynn scores! Jen Flynn, the sister of former NHLer Brian Flynn, ties the game at one. Nice Mirasolo dump off the boards. Can she put on the Jets and get to the puck? She does. Mirasolo, middle shot. You want to take a guess? It's Mirasolo with their 12th of the season. I'm very proud of the way that she's grown over the last four years. Um, I've seen a lot of growth from her since she came in as a freshman. Um, and now she leads the team both in her attitude as well as um, you know, her play on the ice. So she is definitely a role model for especially when we have the younger kids coming in uh, into the program. Um, you know, she's really done a good job at helping bring them together because, like I said before, chemistry is so important um, on a team. While Sammy and Flynn were in their primes, a young DiNapoli was making an immediate impact. <laughs> Known for her goal-scoring acumen and pure toughness, she's reminiscent of a young Sammy Mirasolo. High praise for a player whom many would dismiss as, well, simply too small to play. Yeah, I feel like I'd be much more aggressive and use my body more and like, because they're so much bigger than me, so I'd like, work harder to push them off the puck. And it's a part of the game, you just have to keep fighting through the game and keep going. And when someone does mess with the scoring triumvirate, they'll be met by Paige Thibodeau. A classic two-way forward, Thibodeau is one of the best all-around players in the league. A perfect mix of skill and good old-fashioned grit. Always willing to do her team's dirty work. When necessary, of course. Um, so my style of play is, you know, physical. It's a little more of helping out the, uh, the team more than playing individually. You know, my, it's my favorite thing to set Sammy up and my line mates and, you know, the whole team set him up for goals. Physical thing is pretty important too. It's, I feel like it's a key component to the game. you got to stay physical just to hold against the other team.
With up-and-coming defenseman Sadie Gearing leaving by transfer, her spot on the blue line was filled by junior transfer Chloe Shapley. A vet of the Massachusetts club hockey ranks, she brought a seasoned presence to an already skilled defense corps. I wanted to spend my last two years being able to play for high school because I transferred from like the Wizards juniors team and I wanted to be able to play with my friends and make moves. It's probably definitely one of the best decisions I've ever made in my whole entire life because I've made friendships that I know that will last a lifetime. The Tanner's defense score consisted of hardened vets and young up-and-comers, featuring Riley Ganter, Captain Carolyn Garofoli, junior transfer Chloe Shapley, and sophomore Catherine Sweeney. I think the biggest difference is that I've grown as a player not only because of my teammates, but also because of my coaches, Michelle, Amanda, and Steven. At the last line of defense between the pipes stood senior Jenny Collins, a three-year backup to Abby Buckley and fresh off a 6-0 junior campaign which featured a 1.0 goals against and three shutouts, Roach handed her the keys to the car for all 20 games and basically said, have at it. Um, like almost like disbelief because like, I didn't think that like I'd finally get my chance to like really play all 20 games. I also thought that like Audrey would play a little bit more because like how I would play uh, in some of like the easier games, uh, like in the last three years, so I assumed Audrey would play that too. I didn't think that I'd actually end up starting off 20 games. The commitment surely paid off. Ranked second in the league with a 14-5-1 record and a 1.68 goals against average, Collins answered the call night after night, playing the most mentally demanding position on the ice. Behind every hockey player is a story, 24 unique stories to be exact. So I started playing probably when I was about 9 or 10 years old. Um, we started playing this game, my father played, um, he got me and my brothers into it, uh, and I just, you know, I really loved being on the ice, and I, I stuck with it, and that was, you know, my main sport. I started playing hockey seven years ago because my brother like was into it and my dad just put me into it. I like playing hockey because like it brings like everyone together and like we're all from different towns for, for this team so like it brings like everyone together and we don't normally see each other so like it's like a big family together. I started playing hockey two years ago. Um, both my brothers played and my dad coached their team so it was all around me and I was kind of the odd man out in my family, so my dad just kind of threw me in my freshman year, and I've been playing ever since. <laughs> I love the friendship on the team, and it's just such a fast-paced sport. It's interesting to watch and fun to play. I started playing hockey when I was four years old. We used to have a backyard rink, so my brothers always threw me in net. And then I just got shots on, and then I was just like, can I play hockey? And it just kind of went down like that. I started playing hockey when I was around five. You get to form like new friendships with different people and it's like very competitive. I started playing hockey when I was six years old. I just find it like a really competitive sport and I find it like the most interesting out of all the sports that I've watched. I like the friendships and like the competitiveness of the sport and I love just like meeting new people through it. Well, I started when I was about like four years old doing Learn to Skate, but second grade was like my first actual team I put on. I started playing hockey when I was like six or seven. I started playing hockey in fourth grade because my dad played hockey and I just wanted to be like him. I love playing hockey because it's just a time where I can like stop thinking about everything and I can come hang out with all my friends and do what I love. I started skating when I was two. I started playing hockey when I was four. I started playing hockey when I was six or seven years old. This team in like particular, we're all really close and we're kind of like sisters to each other. So it just makes the sport like so much more enjoyable.
After a 3-1 start on the road, McMahon O'Keefe was rocking for the first time since February of earlier that year. Freshman Hannah Gromko dented the scoreboard first with a nifty goal of her own, but the Tanners quickly found themselves in a 2-1 hole going into the third period. Enter the captain, number eight. When I think of the Peabody Winthrop rivalry, the first word that comes to mind immediately is hatred. Rivalries are the lifeblood of hockey. Amongst the fans and the players, it's that attitude of we don't like them, they don't like us. It's two different histories, it's two different styles of play, it's two different fan bases, it's two different arenas. They just couldn't be any more different. PBD is much more of a skill-based, throw the puck on net, stick down on the ice, drop back, play tight defense kind of team. Kind of set in the fundamentals of hockey. Winthrop, in contrast, is much more of a, a throwback, smash mouth, hard hitting, in your face kind of hockey team. Kind of remind you of the old Big Bad Bruins era of the 1970s and 80s. It was a blowout from the very beginning. DiNapoli proved she was in fact the real deal against a formidable foe, potting her first career hat trick against a team that had made the playoffs the season prior with largely the same roster. I felt like really glad and like I felt accomplished to have scored three goals against such like a hard team that's really good. The line mates wouldn't let her have all the fun though, as Catherine Sweeney, Riley Ganter, Sammy Mirasolo, and Jen Flynn all netted goals of their own in a display of utter domination. But it came at a cost. Um, well, it all happened so fast. I was definitely got the wind knocked out of me. And so I was a little bit in shock. So the first thing that I kind of thought about was I wanted to get off the ice as fast as I could. Gromko would be lost for the next four games with a severe concussion, an injury that in order to return from, you just have to be 100%. It was um, definitely a little bit hard watching other people because as the game was getting quicker, I was still recovering which was obviously harder um, for me. But little did anyone in McVan O'Keefe know that night that the Tanner's struggles were just beginning. A valiant effort in a 6-4 loss to Norwell was followed by a sobering loss to HPNA, a team that they had defeated the previous season. A 2-2 tie to Northeastern Hockey League rival Masco would be the high point of that stretch, however, as PBD would be shut out for only the second time on the season to Reading 1-0. It's safe to say that at that very moment, morale was at an all-time low. Um, you know, that was, I think it was just like a rough, you know, everyone has bumps and that was, that was one of ours. I think honestly it was that we were more playing for ourselves and not for each other. Um, I think it was vaguely nerve-wracking thinking that like maybe like we're not going to do as well because I know the Bruins around that time weren't doing too hot either and it was like a vague worry in the back of your head what if we aren't going to make it what if we aren't going to go to the playoffs or like be as good as last year and like me filling in like Abby's spot was just like what if I'm not a good enough goalie to fill in for what she had left behind but um, our ability to like kind of pull it back together was like 
what we needed, I think. Yeah, I think that was a tough go for us a little bit because I think one of our biggest issues this year has never been losing because of skill, but it's been losing because of confidence in our mental game. So on Thursdays when we did our team workouts uh, after I did mental skills with them, so each week we spent 30 or 35 minutes doing mental skills. So that's where we started talking about self-confidence and the biggest lesson I wanted them to walk away with was that if you make a mistake, it's not about making the mistake, it's about learning from it. And then our motto became, it's about the next shift and if you need to hit the reset button, you hit it and then you move forward. Having reached the lowest of lows, the Tanners had only one place left to go, up. I think we just realized that, you know, it's coming towards the end of the season. You know, we got to play with the seniors. The girls all want to play for us. So I think we just, you know, when you lose games continuously, like, you just got to get, get out of that mindset and know that we are a winning team and we can win. And thus began a streak that will go down as one of the greatest in the history of Massachusetts high school hockey. Seven consecutive wins to end the season. After we started gelling and communicating more than we used to. Um, we switched the lines up a couple times and I feel like we all like supported each other and we just like got back on our feet. The stretch saw heroes born and legends made, with Sammy Mirasolo's 12 goals during the stretch, including a four goal effort against Hingham, the stellar play of a redeemed Jenny Collins in net, and a Jen Flynn hat trick against Medford Malden, as well as the return of a now healthy Hannah Bronco. I was, um, it took me a while to get my feet under me, so I was definitely motivated to, um, you know, catch back up with the pace of the game. I think that, um, like all of the bad things that have happened kind of like make, made us bond and we ended up working together as a team better than we ever had before. The second half Tanners were absolutely unbeatable. And in the middle of it all stood the kid in the number eight jersey from North Reading, Massachusetts well on her way to cementing her status as the greatest Tanner to throw on the white and blue uniform. <laughs> Mira Solo comes from a family of hockey royalty. Sister Cassie is a former Tanner captain herself. Mom Elaine played at Pope John's and the Rochester Institute of Technology and Dad Vin is the current coach for the Melrose boys hockey team. I was born into it, obviously, with both my parents playing and my sister playing. My grandparents love it, we all just love it. And I, it's just, when I'm on the ice, it's like nothing else matters and I feel like it's the one thing that just like comes natural to me. Like, I work hard for it too and you know, I practice a lot and you know, I listen to my dad and my mom and my grandparents just give me a lot of advice about it but it's just something that whether people kinda talk to me about it or not, it's just in my brain, like, it just comes natural to me, which, it's just, I love that. Her list of achievements is endless. Just this season, she claimed her second Northeastern Hockey League MVP, broke her single season points record, and cracked the 100 career points mark, the first Tanner ever to do so. I always tell myself, kind of, if I'm having an off game or things just aren't going my way, to kind of just like I have to respond to my mistakes and respond to adversity and just keep moving forward no matter I don't even know what's going on sometimes if, or if I'm like in my head just kind of keep moving forward all the time. She's earned her captaincy with her leadership on and off the ice. You know she's a very good leader in the locker room. She'll hype, you, hype us up. Um, she'll on the ice she'll ask if we're all okay like all of those things make sure everything's good. But before the Tanners could pursue hockey immortality, a trio of Tanners awaited an emotional send-off at McVan. big 
lost losing Carol, but I think that me and Chloe are strong and we can push through it and accomplish a lot next year. Sammy's my best friend. We've known each other all of our lives. Playing on the ice is just like how we would be off the ice. These three players are arguably the biggest reasons as to why this team even exists to this day. Garofoli, Collins, and Mirasolo. Three players never to be forgotten, forever revered. As I got in my car to go to Winthrop, to the Larson Arena, I knew that we were probably about to witness the greatest high school hockey game that I've ever witnessed in my entire life. This was no ordinary rivalry game. For one night in Winthrop, Massachusetts, Nothing else mattered except winning. This one night would be a test of the years of relentless training and conditioning to master their craft. One night that would test the years of hard work put into bringing this program back to relevance. One night to define a legacy. What ensued was arguably one of the greatest grudge matches in league history. Entering the third period, there were still no goals on the score sheet, but Mirasolo sought to change that early. and the forwards too. They're back checking really well. The defense was playing amazing. With the offense struggling and the defense holding their own, Collins was playing the game of her life. I was really nervous at first, but like because I'd had a couple of good saves earlier in the night, uh, I wasn't that nervous, I guess, because as soon as I make a, what I perceive to be a good save, I feel like I'm very settled. A tie is as anticlimactic as it gets in hockey, and a Julia Holmes goal for Winthrop nearly gave us that one-to-one -one tie. Obviously, we got a goal taken away, and you know we're getting frustrated. We're not ending this in a tie. We're not going to lose this. Like we want to win the league. I look over and I see there's no goalie in the net. That's one heck of a gamble, especially with a tie game. The coaches told me to choose the play. I knew if Sammy won the faceoff, she was going to take it the length of the ice and score. I got it right to Carol. Her pass was beautiful. I think just realizing this is actually happening, like this is actually working, and then I just got as close as I could, and I just shot it. no words that can properly describe the emotions one feels when they hear the sound of that final buzzer, and you are the victors. The faces of the players tell the story. It was really exciting to win the title, and for me personally, it was just extra special because I grew up in Winthrop, so being able to win in front of all the people from Winthrop that doubted me growing up was just amazing.
With one more game left on the schedule, the Carlin Cup is a tradition that dates back to 1987, when the Tanner Boys of Peabody and Bishop Fenwick High School met for what became an annual end-of-season matchup. Named for longtime Peabody boys coach Charlie Carlin, the Tanner girls had a three-game win streak over their crosstown rivals entering the game. This was a textbook hockey game, down to the wire. But Peabody would extend their win streak to four in a 4-2 win, with Sammy Mirasolo and sophomore Ella McTeague playing the role of heroes. close game, so putting those goals in was definitely going to help. I mean, obviously I couldn't have done it without my line mates. They got the puck to the net, and in the back of my head I was just thinking, get it to the net, get to the net, make sure you can get a shot on net, and just be there for the rebound with your stick down. There is nothing like playoff hockey. The slate is wiped clean. Records mean nothing. In the playoffs, heroes are born and legends are made. For some, it's the final 45 minutes of hockey they'll ever play in their lives. Forty-five minutes to define a season, a career, a legacy. Shot, screen, rebound! They can't poke it by and they do! Mirasolo makes it 1-0! Senior Sammy Mirasolo adding to the already incredible legend and mystique surrounding the number eight jersey. There wasn't a second where we gave up. It was, we just made sure that we got like what we got done and we just went out there and played our game. Centered into the middle, Flynn a back hitter, scores! Jen Flynn! Two nothing! Chase it off, she gets another situation to shoot! Hat trick! Sammy Mirasolo! As the final seconds ticked away, the memories of their mid-season skid, any memory of their playoff loss from the previous year, all melted away into the cheers of the Tanners faithful. To the Tanners. Shot by Kelly through the screen. Rebound is covered. Back in the net score. Wolfpack is on the board early. Off the bench, a drive. Scores! Goonan, 2-0. Towards the empty net. And it will end in a three-goal game for the Wolfpack. It's really, it's sad, you know, I hate being a senior. This is the best four years I could have ever asked for. Um, and I met like the best people ever on this team. So it's, it's really disappointing and it's sad, but you know, I'm proud of what we accomplished this season. And you know, it might have, you know, we might have had an off game and we could have, you know, done better. And 
yeah, we could have maybe ended up with a win, you know, who knows, but every game, you know, ends up differently and it wasn't one of our most, you know, proudest games. Oh, it was hard. It was very sad. I mean, um, I think it was sad. I wasn't sad because it was over. I think it was sad, like I was mostly sad because of our seniors that we were leaving. And um, I grew very close with Carol and Sammy in a very short amount of time. And I was always close with Jenny too. But yeah, I think it was just the fact that they were leaving. Not because like I do have another year to play, but I think them just leaving is what hurt the most. It was a good game, but I know that we have next year and we can keep going with that, but it's hard to lose our seniors like that. When you look beyond the wins and the losses, you'll see a team that defied all the odds, all logic, and one that has cemented its well-deserved page into the history of Massachusetts high school hockey. There will never again be a team quite like this one. New players will don the sweaters, new generations of fans will crowd the glass every night, and old records will be broken, but the names and the memories will never be forgotten. Twenty-four names from three towns, together playing the most amazing game in the world. And in years' time, should they forget your name, Tell them, we were Tanners. Thank you.